hello, I'm going to do a feature video on Language Weaver. Language Weaver is an enterprise translation cloud-based platform that allows companies to translate content quickly and securely. This view we see here is via a browser-based UI, but it is fully integratable via API into your various business platforms. Before we get started with translating content, I wanted to walk you through the user interface. Here we are on the Translate and Insights tab, which is where translation and other work is actually performed. Next is the Settings tab. The Settings tab features various features like dictionaries, brand lists, feedback, reporting, and is also where user administration is done for account administrators. The Reports tab is a quickly accessible reporting feature that shows me at a glance how many translations have been done, how many characters have been used, languages, and other related pieces of information. We also have a notifications icon. If there has been a new feature released since the last time I visited the page, it will notify me here. The question mark icon is a direct link to the documentation and is a great resource to use for self-serving information. Lastly, if you click on your name, you'll be able to see preferences, you'll be able to log out and also to change your password. Moving on to translation. RWS has 160 neural machine translation language pairs available. Here, a language pair is defined as a unidirectional translation from a single source language to a target language. I have it set to detect language, and when I paste text in, it detects the source language. In addition to the 160 language pairs, we also have language pair chaining, which means that you can go from any language into any other language. In this case, I can go from Spanish into Swahili if I needed to. With language pair chaining, we have over 2,600 language combinations available. Another feature of the platform is something called a dictionary. A dictionary is a bilingual word list that you can apply onto your translations. These word lists are a translation output customization mechanism. So here I have a German example. The translation looks fine, but I can see that one of the acronyms here is not translated correctly. Because I don't want to have to fix this each and every single time I encounter this acronym, I can load my dictionary, which will make the change for me, as I have already compiled a list of common acronyms for diversity and inclusion work. Just as easy as it was to apply, I can also take the dictionary off and I can also add multiple dictionaries if I need to. To note, dictionaries are also supported via API as well as other various connectors and integrations such as our Microsoft Office connector. To translate an entire document, you can use the drag and drop feature on the screen. To get a quick peek of what file types are supported, you can hover over the blue icon that says click to upload files and it will give you an indication of what is natively supported within the UI. Most common file types are supported. So in order to translate a file, just drag and drop that file. Double check that your target language is correct and then in this case, click on translate into English. Click the gray button to instantly download the fully translated file. Now note that my account is set to instantly delete any content that I've submitted for translation. So as soon as I download the file, it means that I will not be able to access it again. This is a security by design feature. You might have noticed that when I translate a file, I also have a feature called Content Insights available. Content Insights is a multilingual summarizer. There are many different use cases of how to use it, but in this particular example, I have translated a file from German into English. If I want to get a sense for what is actually in this translated document before I download it, I can look at the Content Insights to give me an idea of what I just translated. You can click this button before you translate the content as well. So it will also summarize many documents together. So this can be useful if you want to have a quick understanding of your text before you send it to translation. Another feature available here is labeling. Labels are set by the account level. Here, when I translate a new document via drag and drop, I can select a label. The value with labeling is that I can filter reporting based on labels. So if I want to see exactly how many words I've translated for legal, for example, by applying this label, I can run that filter in my reports tab. This can be particularly useful for customers that are looking to build back machine translation work within their organization. 
Directly within the system, we are able to submit feedback. This feature is called real-time adaptation. What real-time adaptation does is it allows the individual user to submit changes. These changes can be preferences or we can be addressing errors. To submit feedback, I click on the pencil icon and I can make a minor change. When I submit the feedback, it goes into a feedback queue. When the feedback is approved by someone within your organization, this change will be effective anytime any user within your account encounters the same source segment. This is particularly powerful so that edits submitted by one are usable for everyone, so everyone takes advantage of feedback that is approved. The last feature I would like to cover here is Abby. When I showed the drag and drop feature, you might have noticed that PDFs are supported. In order for PDFs to translate, the tool uses a process called OCR, or Optical Character Recognition, in order to rebuild the source text and then run it through the neural machine translation model. While our standard OCR library works very well on the majority of PDF types, Abby is particularly powerful on scanned PDFs or PDFs with a source language that uses a non-Latin alphabet. Examples here would be Asian languages or languages that use Cyrillic script. By default, it is set to smart selection. Smart selection means that the tool will determine which is the best OCR library to use for the source content that you have loaded into the browser. In the documents that I already have available here, you can see that it translated my German PDF using the standard OCR library, but it used the Abbey OCR library for my Chinese scanned PDF. If you have any questions about Language Weaver, please contact your RWS account manager or sales representative, and we would be happy to answer any additional questions you might have. Thank you.